So I'll be talking on complex analysis, but it's a huge subject. So we are going to just choose a small corner and do something about that. Uh, so, so I'll be essentially talking about something called harmonic functions. You may, if you may, all of you may or might have seen it. Uh, so for them, it will be repetition, but still we just discuss this. So. Uh, so we just start from the very basics. So uh, let's just uh, forget about complex function for a moment and start with uh, real functions. So I have a real function, real valued function of real variable. Then uh, what it means to have a derivative at a point. Uh, so suppose. f has derivative this font is large enough or i should write even larger slightly larger okay so has derivative then you can you can expand f like this So derivative at this, so I am denoting this f prime a to be the derivative and uh, so you can write it like this plus some term, a reminder term. So yeah. So if it has a, if, it, if, it, if the derivative exists then you can write it like that. So, uh, likewise, if the function has a uh, derivative of up to uh, order k, uh, then you can have uh, k terms, then something small. So, this is something small which goes to 0 if x goes to a. Uh, so, uh, what we see is I can write it like this. So, this goes to 0 so, so that is the condition to have derivative and we can uh, uh, make it a little more familiar by, by writing like this. So, x can be written as a plus h and uh, then I write it as uh, a plus h minus f a. So, this goes to 0 as h goes to 0. So, if we if we take this as a definition, then we would get back to the we, we can get back to the usual definition of derivative. This is just the same, but this definition has a little advantage, it, it generalizes to higher dimensions. So, it can be generalized to higher dimensions uh, by looking at this this multiple of h. So, this is just like a uh, just uh, something which gets multiplied to h uh, as a linear function. So, if I, so I can just generalize this to define derivative on R k. So, so this is the k dimensional vector space over R. So, here so f is said to have derivative at a <coughs> in R k if there exists a linear function
say A, such that, so the this f prime A is now replaced by a linear function. So, such that this f this goes to 0. <coughs> so, if this happens, then uh, then I say that uh, if, if there exists a linear, fu uh, linear function like this, then we say that f has a derivative at a. So, similarly, we define derivative for complex functions, because as a vector space, just as a vector space, this complex uh, complex function, complex uh, numbers, uh, this C, the, the, the set of complex numbers, which is a vector space. So, this is just as R2, as a vector space. So, in, in that case also, we can define it just similarly. So, then th this is this is just consider this k equal to 2 case of this. Yeah, it is a yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, now you can you can uh, uh, you can yeah so no so h is not a real number h e h is in r k so h yeah so i have to uh, yeah so i have to make a bit of change uh, so it's the it's the norm yeah it's the norm and and it's also the norm here which goes to zero sorry so that was yeah so yeah so let's put everything in this yeah because everything is uh, rk valued so everything is happening in norm so yeah so and and the norm goes to zero yes so so now the now the uh, now the so th that is essentially the difference now you have various directions to go to the go to a and uh, so all of them has to agree to have the derivative exist so that's that's the that's the issue when k is uh, greater than or equal to 2 Okay, so for complex numbers, uh, so I, I say f has uh, say z naught if there exists a uh, a linear function from R two to R two. So, where I am uh, this uh, as vector space, I am just identifying uh, C and R 2. So, linear structure they are the same. So, such that so again again this. Uh, okay, so now for just for simplicity, we assume this uh, following thing. So assume this. Uh, assume that the z naught is zero, and this is also this f z naught. That makes just the thing very simple. So uh, z naught is zero, and f zero is zero, and we are considering the existence of derivative at zero. Okay, let's erase this thing. Yeah. 
Ah, okay. Yeah, right. So, so that also, uh, so that is just via this, uh, 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 this uh, identification that if I have a complex number, then I write it as x plus i y, and then I go to x comma y, which is in R two. So, use that kind of an identification. <coughs> no, A is a A is a two by two matrix. Yeah. No, A is a K cross K matrix. This is a, this is just a linear transformation. So it's a K cross K matrix. Then you have a, a K vector. So. Yeah, so we, so we just specialize a little bit to make things a bit easier. Uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, so okay, so so I'm I'm writing like this now. So Z naught is uh, zero, and also this is just an assumption to make it <coughs> make things simple. Uh, and and just let let's just write h as z to remember that this is a, a complex number we are dealing with. Uh, so f uh, of uh, z minus a z <coughs> by z. Uh, so this has to go to zero. Uh, so in in again in this uh, this term. So this has to go to zero as uh, z goes to 0. <coughs> uh, so, j let us just write this n z. So, new, so, so uh, some eta z as this this thing. So, f z that this quotient this just this function. So, this uh, by n z. Okay, to remember that this is a, this is a, this is a function it is not a uh, not just a multiple. So, you can put a bracket like So then, if z is a z uh, plus uh, z eta z, and we have this property that the uh, mod loss of eta z is going to zero as uh, z mod z goes to zero. So uh, at this point, I, I start writing this uh, z as x plus i y. So, A is a uh, linear function. Uh, so, what A does? So, so A z is A x plus i y. So, it will make it some alpha x plus beta y, uh, where alpha and beta are complex numbers, some complex numbers. Any, any linear uh, function will have this property. So, this has this R 2 linearity. So, just by, so I am just identifying as far as the linear structure goes. Uh, so, you have that. So, uh, so what is, uh, what is it that we have now? Uh, okay. yeah, so, uh, keep it here. Uh, so, I have this, uh, yeah, so I have f z alpha x plus beta y. So, I am writing z as x plus i y plus this uh, z eta z. So, so now what is alpha and beta? So, what is alpha and beta? So, so let us now start assuming that f has partial derivatives uh, with respect to x and y. So, suppose f has partial derivatives partial derivatives uh, with respect to x and y. 
Uh, so if I if I just take partial derivative, so f del f by del x, so then it will give you give uh, so then it's just and and at at z equal to zero, so just take this at z equal to zero, then this is obviously just alpha. Because this, so when you take partial derivative with respect to x, this goes away, and this this goes to z. This so when you put z equal to zero, this is zero. So. And del a, del f this is beta. So, <coughs> yeah, uh, so let us start writing this uh, like this. So, F z, so F z is uh, alpha x. So, x can be written as so from just from this. So, okay. so, x can be written in. So, I am just trying to write x in terms of uh, this uh, z. Uh, so, alpha uh, z plus z conjugate by 2 that will just uh, bring out the real part. Uh, then beta z minus z conjugate by 2 i. plus z eta z. <coughs> yeah. uh, so, now z is uh, alpha. Uh, so, alpha minus i beta by 2 and z bar comes with alpha plus i beta so there is this uh, 1 by 1 by i so 1 by i is minus i yeah so i'm just using this fact that uh, uh, i square is minus 1 so 1 by i is minus i so this by 2 uh, plus this quantity So, now we have alpha and beta defined by this. So, we define this uh, two uh, operators, two differential operators, partial differential operators like this. One is uh, delta, uh, this is uh, del del x uh, plus i del del y. Okay, let's choose the sign. Okay, I'll define with this minus sign. So define these two, and del bar is defined to be del del x minus plus i del del y. So, these, these, these two definitions are just motivated by these quantities, because this is this alpha is del del x and beta is del del y. So, so uh, and then what we what we have is f z is uh, this del f at 0 plus uh, sorry into z into z uh, plus uh, plus this okay write this z first so this will be less confusing so z bar with del bar f at 0 
plus z eta z. Uh, okay, so with this writing we come back here. So, what we want is uh, so if z by z is del f 0 plus z bar by z del bar f 0 plus eta z. Now, now let us take uh, z going to 0. Uh, so, the so when uh, z goes to 0, this should be the derivative at 0. This should be the derivative at 0. Yeah, sorry. Half is missing. Uh, half. Uh, yeah, yeah, half is missing. Yes, 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 yes. There is a, there is a half. I, I put a half here. Yes. Sure, thank you. Yeah, this half has to be there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so now, uh, once we, when we let uh, z goes to zero, then this quantity is the derivative of f at zero, and this uh, new z goes to zero. Uh, so now. Uh, this thing is just a constant, but this has a has a problem. So the problem is the following. Uh, so this quantity is uh, this uh, z conjugate by z. So so if if z is uh, so I can approach zero. So z going to zero. So I can approach it uh, via. So let's draw the complex plane. So here is my zero. And so I can, I can. So this is my real line. This is that imaginary axis, say i. Uh, so I can, I can approach zero uh, uh, through the imaginary axis, or I can approach through real line. Uh, real line. I can approach in any direction. It should converge to the same limit. Uh, so the problem is the following. So if I, if z is purely uh, real, this will be just one. If z is real, then this has this is just one, and it is minus one, minus one. If it is purely imaginary, if uh, z is purely imaginary, so probably I am writing a bit smaller. So if z is purely imaginary. Yeah, so 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 this quantity then depends on the direction we are moving. So if we move by, move through real axis, it's always one, and if we move through the uh, the imaginary axis, it's always minus one. So to have a derivative, we we surely need this quantity to be zero. Then otherwise it doesn't exist. So we need this this coefficient whatever has come, it should be zero. So So if z, <coughs> uh, so if so, I'm saying that the derivative at zero exists if <coughs> delta bar f of zero is zero. Uh, so what is what is this delta bar f? So let's just uh, write down the delta bar f. Uh, okay, so okay, yes, this. So now let's write f as u plus i v. So, u is the imaginary part and v is the real part. So, 
Uh, both are real functions. So, so this is a real function. So, now I am going to write this uh, del, uh, del bar of f is half of del del x minus uh, this is the bar. So, i so this is half. So, I write down the real part. So, del u del x uh, minus del v del y plus i by 2 uh, this other part del v del x plus del u del y. So, we want these to be 0. So, both of them have to be 0. So, this and this both has to be 0. So, del u del x has to be equal to del v del y and del v del x del u del y sorry this minus sign with a minus sign yes. So, that is a necessary condition to have derivative. So, if f has to have a derivative. So, here we considered point the point derivative at 0, because it made calculation bit easier, but it will be the situation will be exactly the same wherever you do and you this function will need to satisfy this these things. So, if derivative exists these two th conditions are satisfied. Uh, it is not true that if these two conditions are satisfied then derivative exists. So, this is not sufficient, but it is the necessary condition. So, these are called Cauchy Riemann equations. So, there are several ways to come to Cauchy Riemann equation, but everything essentially boils down to this uh, this sort of situation that the uh, in one direction it is it is something and in other direction it is something else. Uh, so, these are Cauchy Riemann equations. So, okay, so that is sort of our uh, starting point to functions which uh, are uh, differentiable at some point. So, So, now, now we are uh, ready to define uh, uh, harmonic functions. So, before that I, I need to define a operator. Uh, so, okay, I can just directly define this. So, so this is called uh, a Laplacian. So, this is uh, double partial derivatives. So, this is Laplacian, well, most of you know it. So, so this is called Laplacian and uh, so if the f, so a complex function, we start with a complex function. So, is uh, harmonic, is said to be harmonic if del f is 0. So, if if uh, if this Laplacian uh, if the Laplacian of the function vanishes then we call it an harmonic function. So, we uh, okay, so immediately we see something this the Laplacian is a linear operator. Sorry? 
a range we are starting with I mean we can just define to be C that is not a problem. So, but real valued harmonic functions are going to be this real part of uh, that we will do then we will consider only real valued harmonic functions. Yeah. Yeah, just with the definition, but most of the time we are going to consider real real valued harmonic functions uh, because of this reason, reason that Laplacian is uh, uh, is a linear operator in the sense that delta of f plus g is delta f plus delta g. To uh, so so to have so to prove a fun is prove that a function is uh, harmonic, it's enough to just consider the real part. So. Uh, f equal to u plus i v. So, if f, f is harmonic if and only if both are harmonic. So, so we just need to consider the uh, consider real valued harmonic function. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so here we immediately notice one thing that uh, this uh, if this is 0 then delta f bar is also 0. And if that is so, then by this linearity f plus f bar is also 0. <coughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so, so f of real f, so real part is 0 and, and similarly the imaginary part is also, also 0. So, yeah, and also exactly in similar manner that imaginary part of f this is also 0. So, if, if we if we take a harmonic function then it is real real part and the imaginary part both are harmonic. Uh, so, uh, uh, let us let us look at this. Uh, uh, so, the complex uh, functions which have derivatives, so it satisfied ok I probably should not have erased it. Uh, so, it satisfies this Cauchy Riemann equation. Uh, so, let us let us look at that. So, you can simply so Okay, so, if, if a function which is which has derivative, uh, uh, so okay, we do an, uh, two things. So, we would uh, for uh, yeah, for the entire lecture we will be inside this uh, open disk. So, if you, if you have this complex plane like this, then this is the point 0, then you have this unit disk uh, defined by this. So, complex numbers such that z is less than 1 strictly less than 1. So, that is an open set. Uh, so, that I am going to call it u and the circle which I drew. So, this circle this I am going to call t. So, we will be working with u all the time u and t. So, so that is always our domain of definition for functions whatever we consider that will make many things easier. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what I was talking about, so f is <coughs> so f is holomorphic. So, if you, if so that is a peculiar property of complex function if it is differentiable then it is differentiable of all order. Uh, so, that is a major difference from the real analysis and so in that situation we call it holomorphic function. So, f is holomorphic not has is holomorphic on u. So, we consider a holomorphic function on u so which has derivative and so derivative of all order. Uh, okay. So, th then it satisfies this Cauchy Riemann equation. So, which we define by delta this is 0. So, <coughs> so,
so that was del del x mm. <coughs> and uh, del del x minus del del uh, minus or yeah plus 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 this f Okay, uh, and now you are going to now we uh, we consider this uh, of this operation that uh, del of so let's consider this uh, okay let's keep this so okay fine so I I consider this uh, del del of del bar of f. So that is. Uh, so, I am considering del del x minus i del del y on, on this. So, what does this give? This gives uh, this double derivative. So, this gives this. Uh, so, I am just looking at the real part first. So, this gives the double derivative and uh, plus the sorry. So, and then imaginary part. So, that will give the mixed ones. Uh, so, del uh, del del x and this. So, yeah, uh, the minus. So, if f f, so if f is at, so, so, uh, so when will this, so these are mixed derivatives. So, one is one, one in one we are doing the uh, y, y derivative with respect to y first then x and then uh, in this we do it for x first and then y. Uh, so, these two will be equal if f has uh, continuous second partial derivative. So, if f has continuous uh, second partial derivative uh, in particular if if f is holomorphic it has derivative of all order then these things this is satisfied so in particular so if f is holomorphic then this happens. So, then this thing happens. So, uh, okay. so, then this mixed derivatives are equal. Then the mixed derivatives are equal for a holomorphic function. So, for holomorphic function this, this is 0. And as so, and for a holomorphic function, this this is satisfied. This is already zero. So this is already zero. So this left hand side is zero, and this is zero. So this is also zero. <coughs> uh, 
so so one one small thing is uh, the following that the here f is a holomorphic complex valued function so this this is not really the real part and the imaginary part this is just written like this because um, just i am trying to write the operator like that otherwise uh, this f has complex values so these things in involve complex numbers so this is not real imaginary decomposition so we could not have said that this is zero so both parts are zero we couldn't have so we can we can say so because this is zero and this is zero so Yeah, it has to have second order partial derivative and continuous derivative. So, <laughs> yeah, mixed. So, yeah, continuity refers to this. Yeah, 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 not just to f. F of course has to be continuous, so it is differentiable and once you de derive it twice then it remains continuous. So, so the, then these two will be equal and for holomorphic function that is the case, holomorphic function has derivative of all orders, so we do not bother at all. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so these things, so, so we got a relation in fact. Uh, so this, so for holomorphic function you can simply have a, a relation in fact. So, you have this. Uh, so, okay, so once so one problem I have again that half is missing, so everywhere you have to put half. So, this is 4 times. So, for holomorphic function you have this relation that uh, uh, 4 delta delta bar f is the Laplacian. So, you have this relation and for holomorphic function this is 0 this quantity is 0. So, the because it satisfies this Cauchy-Riemann equation, uh, so the Laplacian is 0. So, the Laplacian is 0. So, holomorphic functions are harmonic. So, what we got is, uh, is this for holomorphic function and since this is 0, uh, because it satisfies Cauchy-Riemann equation, this side also has to vanish. Uh, so, f is if f is holomorphic, maybe this is too small again. For holomorphic function f, uh, so it satisfies this Laplacian is 0. So, it is harmonic. So, f is harmonic. So, so holomorphic functions are harmonic. So, holomorphic function satisfies the this condition that the Laplacian vanishes. Oh, I change the notation. So, uh, yeah. So now we have a nice thing here. So he, here you see that if 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 a function is holomorphic. Uh, if a function is harmonic, then its real and imaginary parts are harmonic. So, holomorphic functions are harmonic. So, real part of uh, real and imaginary part of holomorphic functions are harmonic. So, so that is just by this. So, this is a statement that real and imaginary part parts of holomorphic function are harmonic. So, we will also see we will see that uh, if not today then tomorrow we will see that uh, this uh, so, every this the converse of this is also true. So, every real valued uh, harmonic function is real part of a holomorphic function and you can always construct that uh, imaginary part and the complete 
holomorphic functions, the associated holomorphic functions. So, so that that's one of the goal of the uh, discussion to prove the converse. And the other goal is to prove this. So, Dirichlet's uh, problem. So, Dirichlet's problem. So, so that is, so this is one of the focus of our discussion. So that's why I'm uh, always in this uh, disk and circle. Uh, so the thing is the following. So if I have a continuous function, continuous function yeah no the converse is co converse is so the real No, it's a no, 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 no. The, that that's not true. So what I am saying is that uh, a real valued function which is harmonic is real part of a holomorphic function. The function itself need not be a holomorphic function, but it is real part of a holomorphic function. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Uh, but then I am saying real valued harmonic functions arise in this way. So, real valued harmonic functions are always uh, uh, real, real part of a harmonic function, sorry, real part of a holomorphic function. Yeah, yeah, let us just write down the converse. So, let us, yeah. So, let us just write down the converse so that. Uh, yeah, so we can just write down here. So, what I am saying is that real valued, uh, real valued uh, harmonic functions for real valued harmonic functions are real part of some holomorphic function. So, given a real valued harmonic function, you can construct a holomorphic function uh, such that the, the 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 function you started with is the real part of that function so so that the converse in this sense i mean converse or not of this of course no that converse of this as you said it's not true Uh, okay, so that is one of the aims. So we would prove it, uh, this thing, and uh, and uh, so another another aim is to prove this Dirichlet's problem. And uh, so I'm just trying to state the problem. So what is the problem? So Dirichlet's problem says the following: that if you have a continuous function uh, on T, so suppose f is a continuous function on T, so which is my unit circle. So, you have a continuous function here. So, call it f. So, f is defined on, on, on this circle. Then find, find a harmonic function harmonic function uh, say capital F on u so on the disk uh, <coughs> 
which is continuous on the on the boundary and it agrees with f No, let's change a bit. So, and what I'm changing is this. The, so, you you find a harmonic function on the closure of this. So, closure of this is the disk. So, the u bar is just you can see u bar is u uh, union t. Oh, this this is very badly written. So, uh, maybe this is bigger. Yeah. So, what I mean is that this closed disk, the entire space. So, open disk and the circle. So, you so so the problem is to find a harmonic function on the closed disk such that such that this function when restricted to the to the circle agrees with the f we started with. So, this is the function restricted to the circle. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, this agrees with the function we started with. So, if you have a continuous function on this unit circle, you want to find a harmonic extension of that function. So, you, you, you want to find a harmonic function on the entire closed disk, so that it agrees with f uh, on the circle. Okay, so that is what I want to do. Uh, uh, okay, so, I do not have much time. Okay, let us erase this. Okay, so these are the two things. So probably I will prove it tomorrow. Uh, so because it requires some uh, more definitions, etc. Let's let's uh, get down to this. This we should be able to prove in 20 minutes. Uh, so let's prove, try to prove this converse. Uh, so I erase some things. Yeah, I erase this. Let's skip just these uh, definitions. So, u is open disk and t is the circle. Okay. In fact, we should be recalling a little bit of things. So, okay, let us start proving this. So, okay, we just recall a little bit of basic notations essentially. So, uh, so it is essentially notations. So, so ju just to make sense what we are talking about. So, so I, I define a differential form. So, a differential form. A differential form is an, an is an expression of this form, and uh, that p dx plus q dy. So different. Uh, so, and where this uh, p <coughs> p and q are complex functions. They are complex valued functions, and this uh, dx and dy are just symbols. D y these these are just symbols associated to uh, this uh, x y is uh, the so symbols associated to this uh, z we are going to write at x plus i. So we also need to define what is what is integration of differential forms. 
Uh, so we uh, we define what is a path. So the so these are the things we need. So differential form. So what is a path? <coughs> so path is a continuous function uh, from uh, an interval in the real line, say a to b, uh, to the complex numbers. So where this gamma t is given by x t y t. So, in this coordinate notation otherwise you can write it as x t. So, all are same. So, I mean just writing it in a different x t plus i y t. So, real and imaginary real and imaginary parts. So, yeah x t and y t are real uh, this is real this, these two are real valued functions. So, writing like that. So, then uh, the then we define so this is just definition so this we define this integration of omega omega is this form p dx plus q dy uh, along this path gamma to be uh, this to be this uh, this integrals so p uh, okay, so let's write this. These things are uh, for these things are complex valued functions of complex variable, but we would write it like this: that p. Uh, so p, I write it as p x y, where z is uh, x plus i y. So so the p the so this is the real part and the imaginary part. So p z is written like this. So, p x y. So, that I can write it like this. So, p x. So, p x t y t x prime t. Ah, okay. So, I should also mention that this should be. Uh, so, just to define a path it needs to be continuous, but I would al also require it to be uh, differentiable. So, so let us assume that this is differentiable. You can assume piecewise differentiability to come to the same definition, but we will just assume it to be differentiable. Uh, differentiable uh, on the open interval of course, because the differentiability at the end does not really make sense, because one of the derivative will exist, one of the yeah, either the left or the right will exist. So, yeah. Then this d t D t, sorry d t. So, this is a to b. So, this is a complex valued function of real variable now variable is now t. So, that is a complex valued function of real variable and this integral we know how to handle this is just a real integral even though there is complex valued function. So, we will just separate it into real and imaginary part and integrate and then the other part so that is this q part q x t y t y dash t so derivative of y and dt so that's the integration of a differential form and so what is the integration of a function so we would simply write it as a differential form so if f is a uh, complex valued function then we are going to write so let let's write dz as dx plus iy so these are special differential forms these are also differential forms so dz denotes this differential form dx plus iy uh, sorry dx plus dy i dy so this is just a special case of this form. so here p is just one uh, con the constant function 1 q is i and uh, corresponding to a function we write this like this. So, uh, f d x f d z yeah. So, we, we write that f d x plus f d y. 
So, where f f starts as this function f f this is f and this is i of f and and so the integration of f d z also is is exactly is falls into the same thing. So, this is a this is an integration. So, this is an integration of this differential form this special differential form. So, complex integration is integration of differential forms that that is that is that is the uh, that is that is the setup we are going to use. Uh, okay, so, I, I just need to say a little more. So, what is an exact form? Okay, Dirichlet's which less problem we are going to bother about tomorrow. So, let us uh, erase that. Okay, so another definition. So, omega, so which is a differential form, is called exact. Is called exact if uh, if they exist. Uh -huh, uh, another definition. I I need another small definition. So, uh, okay. So I just need to define a space. So let's define that first. So this space is C P. So C P is the space of all functions. So, okay, let us write f belong to C P. If f has continuous partial derivative up to order p. So, continuous partial derivative up to uh, order p ok by up to I mean uh, including p. So, here I so, so, so now I just come to this. Uh, so, uh, a differential form is called exact if this omega. Uh, so, if there exists a function which is c 1. So, it has uh, first partial derivative and the derivatives are continuous. Uh, so, such that this omega is equal to d of f. Uh, okay, so, d of f is also not uh, defined. So, d of f has to be uh, defined. So, d of s is also another uh, special form. So, so, d of f is defined to be del x del f del x del x uh, d x. So, that is a just a special form. So, another special form. So, So, these are partial derivatives and this d x d y are just symbols. So, that defines a differential form where this p is the partial derivative of f with respect to x and q is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So, with that definition I have this. So, so what I mean is this uh, that uh, this is equal to del f d y. So, a, a differential a, a differential form is called exact if there is a function which has first uh, which which has first uh, partial derivative and those derivatives are continuous such that this thing this happens that omega is equal to this particular differential form. Yeah, with this uh, notation. So, actually the, the proof of this is more of notations than actually working it out. It is it's, it's rather easy. Sorry? Yeah. Oh, th th this is just a definition. Yeah. Uh, as such that this uh, differential form is of if there is a function such that this is this equal this differential form uh, which is omega is equal to this form.
Yeah. Okay, so we can now just prove this. So we, we start with a real valued uh, function, real valued uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so so we start with a uh, harmonic function. So G is harmonic. and real valued. So, we start with a real valued harmonic function. So, so we know that this delta g is 0. So, so then we have this 4 delta delta bar g is 0 because of this equality of these operators. Okay, so uh, let's let's put a little. Let's we, we require a little more assumption. So uh, because we to to have this equality, we also assume the continuity of the second partial derivative. So we should also assume that f is in C two. So it has second continu second partial derivative which are continuous. So this should also go into the assumption. So f is harmonic, real valued, and so, G is also in C 2. So, it has a partial derivative of, uh, of up to second order and uh, those deri the derivative is continuous, those derivatives are continuous. So, so then this equality holds. Yeah. Uh, so, you can just interchange these, uh, these operators that is not a problem. You can easily see that if this is 0, then this is also 0. So, this will imply that this uh, delta g, this function, this delta g satisfies Cauchy Riemann equation. So, delta g, yeah. So, <coughs> yeah, it satisfies this Cauchy Riemann equation, and in, in this in this setup, in this setup of, uh, of real valued functions uh, with uh, 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 yeah, in this setup of real valued function, you can you can uh, also prove that this will this will be uh, sufficient for uh, the analyticity. So delta G is uh, holomorphic. So once delta G is holomorphic. I have to use a theorem. Uh, so, let us just uh, uh, write down that theorem. So, let us keep these notations, some of them. Mm. Okay, it is this. So, here is a theorem. So, So, it is Gurtzeit's theorem. So, this theorem has to be, it is necessary to use this theorem. So, this theorem says that if f is holomorphic, on u, then f z d z 
So, if f is holomorphic on u, then this f z d z uh, which is a differential form. So, d z is uh, defined by uh, this. So, that so this is this f z d z is this. So, that is a differential form this is exact. So, for holomorphic function this form is exact. Uh, so, if I use that So, delta g uh, d z is exact. So, delta g d z is exact. So, there exists a holomorphic function. So, there exists a holomorphic function f uh, so, I am just now using the definition of uh, this exact. So, there exists a function such that this d f is equal to that form. Yeah. So, let us let us erase it a little bit. such that this d f is, uh, is is that form that delta g d z this form. So, I just uh, write it fully. So, this is uh, del f del x uh, d x plus del f del y d y has to be equal to del g del x minus i del g del y. So, that is just by the definition of this. Okay. Let us let us put this uh, there is this 4 missing. So, we would just keep it 2. So, that 2 will help. So, yeah, we just keep it 2 because that we just get rid of that half here. So, there is a half here. So, just keep this 2. So, this thing Uh, so, um, so so also you can just write this uh, just uh, taking conjugate functions. You can write this that dx plus del f bar del y dy is equal to del g del x. So g is real valued. So there is no conjugation. So but so this this is really a uh, real and real and imaginary part. So, this conjugate will be plus i. So, del g del y and same here. Now, if I just add these two things, then I have del del x of f plus f bar plus del del y f plus sorry d x remains of course, this this is just this the symbols will remain. So, d x plus uh, del del y f plus f bar d y and this part if I add would simply become this uh, 2 twice of the, the real real thing. So, this uh, into this plus uh, this, this this into this. So, so twice of that. So, d g d x d x plus del g del y d y. Yes. So, 
so so this is my uh, d d of f plus f bar which is twice of this quantity dg so just just again using that uh, same notation that uh, uh, this uh, df is del f del x dx plus del f del y dy this special form so i'm just using that notation again uh, so this uh, so so but this is just twice of the real part so that two cancels with this so d of the real f is equal to d of g so now if you if you use the that just the definition of the uh, so this is confusing so so if you use the just the definition of the this uh, differential forms then you you can conclude that this uh, real f real f and g just differ by a constant so this is an equality of the two differential forms and when you integrate you get this functions but a, another constant will also be there so so the, so the g we started with that uh, harmonic function uh, so real valued harmonic function which is in c2 is a real part of a uh, holomorphic function 